Well, that would still double the demand for gold going forward. So I am very bullish. I think we're, there's a missing piece that I think is coming. And that's why I think we are where we are today and why I see it as an opportunity. It is interesting. Yeah, I remember last time we had you on, the title of the interview was, I'm still not buying, here's why. And you, that's exactly what you were saying. You were holding off, but it sounds like you're still not buying right now. You're still waiting for lower prices. I just had some clients asking me, gee, this, this stock is down 85% from its peak. Um, it's true. The stock's down 85% from its peak. It's only down like 40% for me because I didn't buy at the peak. So it's, it's still not so compelling that I would want to buy. And the fact that it's down 85% doesn't mean it can't take another. I mean, we haven't had the crash yet. It's down 85% just with resource sector bearishness, which I think we should come back to. I think that's wrong headed. And I do see it as an opportunity, but it's, you know, we haven't had payday come on the mainstream markets yet for their insane optimism on the transitory transitory yard. So, so no, I, I'm not just saying the same thing. I'm, I'm actually saying a similar thing, but if, if anything, a more urgent version, the, the, the fear that we're starting to see right now in the broader markets, I think is more intense. And, and I, I see it as more alarming now than when you and I spoke last. It's not a promise, but that's my take. Lobo, what I want to ask you about now is it seems like what we're seeing fundamentally is we're seeing higher inflation. We're seeing earnings less than expected. It seems like we're in a stagflationary period. This should be the best possible situation for the metals, but we're seeing the metals drop. So yes. why is that? Wait, I thought we'd start with that question. Sure. Yeah, what's wrong? Why, why is it gold? It's, it's the 70s all over again, stagflation. Why isn't gold going through the roof? Um, I think the last time we talked, my answer was partly, well, really given the strong dollar, rising interest rates, the better question is, you know, why hasn't gold dropped more or silver dropped more? I still think it's true, but it doesn't satisfy. I understand. I understand. You know, we're, we're starting to see everything I said about stagflation, not predicting, but saying I thought it was likely, you know, it's, it's turning out. So why isn't gold doing better? I think it is a fair question. Um, uh, my friend Lynn Alden likes to say that a better comparison is the 1940s, uh, but I wasn't there for the 1940s. And I think that as much as the COVID situation is compared to World War II, it's not the same. And the military takeover of the economy, the consequences of things that were done then, I think are quite different from the current context. So the 19th, and, and a critical point is that in 1940, it wasn't you know gold price. In 1940, at least theoretically, the, the dollar was gold if you were a foreign government anyway, you know, you could exchange dollars for gold. Gold and the dollar, it wasn't just pegged. The dollar was defined as a certain amount of gold. So how gold behaved in that environment is different in the post Nixon shock world where the dollar is a complete abstraction with no relation to anything real in the world at all. Um, so I think this inclines me more than the 1970s and the fact that I remember the 1970s, even as a kid, I remember you know, turning my lawnmower money into silver coins and that sort of thing when, when silver was going up. Um, so here's the thing, and I remember this, I was there, as everybody was talking about gold and silver at the time. You, you had your bartender would brag about the you know, gold coin he bought. And I never saw the, the legendary Bernard Brooks shoeshine boy giving me uh, silver stock advice. Uh, I would have been the shoeshine boy. Um, but it was, it was like that. Everybody, they didn't just expect. It was like you knew things were going to be more expensive tomorrow. And if you could buy twice as much today, you did before because it would cost you more tomorrow. That was, that was entrenched in thinking. And, I, and this is critical to the gold silver question, the monetary metals. People didn't trust the dollar, didn't believe in the dollar, or they knew that their dollars were getting worth less over time, despite Richard Nixon's uh, assurances to the contrary. That is not the case today. So it's it's not just, oh, we've got stagflation, what's wrong? We've got incipient stagflation, but we don't have people giving up on the dollar in droves or people convinced that the dollar is, is going, uh, it's gonna hurt them. The latest expectation numbers we got out, and not just from Wall Street and not just from the Fed, but consumer expectation numbers show very high inflation expectations for this year, 
but not the three-year and the five-year expectations. They're almost benign by the time back to five-year, which means, crazy as it sounds, the average Joe out there, they do think the powers that be are going to succeed or, or inflation will come down on its own. They're still buying a version of the transitory story. That's what I'm saying. And the drawing this to a close, what this is different from the 1970s. This is not the popular belief we had then that you know the, the money was just getting more and more worthless. And I think when that changes is when we really see the fire lit under gold and silver. I do think that will happen. Uh, as close to a prediction as you'll get from me, Elijah. I, I do think this is coming. I, <laughs> how many times can they move the transitory goalposts? You know, how many times can they proclaim? It's been every month since last December, Elijah. Every month. It's like, oh, it's peaking now. And then we got a, a higher number. And even by the government's cookbook numbers, you look, it's not just the headline CPI. And yeah, OK, they say, oh, of course, CPI is down four months in a row now. Well. But look at the month on month gains. If you, if, if you, we had high inflation a year ago. So the year on year base effect makes it extra difficult for inflation to come in high, which makes the headline number, you know, really shocking. But you look at the monthly numbers recently and both in headline and core CPI, that's the real shocker. So I don't think I'm just being Pollyanna. I don't think I'm just being a gold bug. Yay, yeah, we're going to win in the end. I think the data supports my thesis. I think we're missing that crucial part of the broader public becoming aware and, and maybe uh, you know, asking themselves whether they wanna have Bitcoin or gold, maybe they'll go for both. But as our friend Rick Rule says, you know, the average allocation globally to gold in portfolios historically is something on the order of 2%, recently it's dropped to 0.5%. Even if everybody doesn't get religion on this or, or discover things, you know, even if it went back just to 1%, like half of the historical average, you know, the other half goes to Bitcoin set. Well, that would still double the demand for gold going forward. So I am very bullish. I think we're, there's a missing piece that I think is coming. And that's why I think we are where we are today and why I see it as an opportunity.